While we're out in San Francisco, we need to check in on a major Silicon Valley player with a stock that's gone from love to low there, matter of months, Twitter. Not long ago, this stock was on fire, but it's now down more than 35% from its highs, most of the damage coming after what many analysts thought was a disappointing quarter last month. After this bruising, is Twitter worth owning? Every time the company stumbled the past, it started to be a terrific buying opportunity, which is why we have embraced the stock here. So let's check in with Ned Siegel. He's the CFO of Twitter. Mr. Siegel, welcome back to Mad Money. Ned, I want to try to figure out how you divide your time. You've got customers, okay. You've got all of this news constantly about what kind of ads you'll take and what you won't take. And then you had some technology issues that you weren't happy about last quarter. Could you just go through your day and tell me how you deal with being the, you know, the guy who's running the CFO of Twitter at a time when it's a little tough on Twitter? Well, remember, we have 4,600 people at the company. Okay. And we've got a bunch of priorities and we try to stay really focused around them. The first one is growing the audience. Okay. We're a purpose-driven company. We want the whole world to use Twitter. We grew our audience 17% last quarter. We're so thrilled with the product momentum that's driving that. Okay. That's where we start. Uh, we also think about our revenue products. We had some challenges there this past quarter. They point to the strategy that we've laid out, though, which is we know we need to rebuild our ad server to allow us to move faster. We know we need mobile okay. application promotion ads to deliver better for advertisers, and that that can lead to more direct response opportunities over time. Although some of it did catch up with us in the third quarter, we have conviction that those are the right priorities and that they'll help did, us over time. Did, did you underspend? Well, that's an interesting question. You know, we grew headcount 16% last year. We were growing at about 20% this year. We're trying to be really thoughtful as we grow the team to make sure that we keep the quality bar really high, that we don't take on too many priorities at the same time, because when we look at the success that we've been able to deliver since Jack returned to the company four years ago, it's been about being really selective and deliberate about our priorities. When your stock was at this level a few years ago, uh, I know Mark Benioff was interested in buying it. At one point, Disney was interested in buying it. Then the stock cratered. They all walked away. Uh, then the stock turned, uh, turned around. Are you uh, worried that someone's actually going to try to swoop you up? Because I don't think that's your intent. What we're worried about is getting the whole world to use the service. Okay. We look at all the great things happening on Twitter, whether it's around the Eagles or something happening here in San Francisco, like the Niners game yesterday, a political event, or something very local in nature uh, in another part of the world. These are great things that bring people together, that people want to discuss, where there may be different perspectives, and you can learn about them in a social and personalized and real-time way on Twitter, and that's what we're focused on. Okay, well, you see what I, I wanted to show you what I have. I've got my direct message, where I mentioned this morning, going back and forth with John Ledger. That's how I communicate with him while he's on. He's the uh, outgoing CEO of T-Mobile. It's the way to do it. I obviously follow the president, who's right now talking about the uh, Dow NASDAQ record close, showing a picture of CNBC. Uh, I follow Adam Schefter, of course. I, these are all my rituals, right? How do you get people to have the same rituals that I do? Because I don't understand why everyone doesn't have it on every minute. Because if, And I know if they did, you'd make a lot more money. Well, I'm glad you say that. And you are a great example of what somebody looks like when they use Twitter properly. You also tweet a lot, and you've got over a million people who right. follow you. So we want people to follow the topics and events that they care about most. That's what people come to Twitter for. Right. We're increasingly organizing the product not just around the accounts that people follow, but around the topics and events. I don't know if you've had a prompt yet, but I've been asked, do I want to follow the Warriors? Do I want to follow the NFL? And that makes it so that I don't have to choose which accounts I want to follow. I just say the topics I want to follow. The experiences around those events are getting so much better as we improve relevance, as we improve the notifications, as we improve the performance no. of the app. And on this, definitely. On this, it's really great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you got to lose. I want to follow politics. I don't mind seeing political ads. I feel that this is the battle of ideas. That uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes said it. You best, the best truth is the power of the thought to get itself accepted in the competition in the market. Why limit the competition? Well, we don't disagree with that thesis, but we feel that a voice around a political campaign, around a political issue, ought to be earned and not bought on Twitter. And it really is that simple to us. If you look at the policy that we detailed on Friday, right. that we'll begin to enforce this Friday, that Jack first tweeted about a few weeks ago. It just comes back to that basic principle. Now, I know I was listening to Walter Isaacson, man, is much smarter than I am. I used to work for him. And he is saying, well, listen, what's bad is targeted ads for people who may not, uh, who may be ignorant of other issues. I'm going to use that as a pejorative word. If you ad, ran the ad everywhere, then it's not targeted. Maybe you just sticker it saying, listen, this is an ad we haven't vetted. Isn't that enough? 
Well, we are limiting targeting, so you won't be able to target more, uh, okay. more deeply than by a state which will make sure that if you have a message that you want to get out that you, around an issue, it may still be allowed, but you won't be able to do micro-targeting. In the end, we want people it's to very talk. good. We, want, we think it is good, too. We want people to be able to talk about these issues. We want people to see different perspectives. We want them to feel safe being a part of the conversation. We want them to trust the information that they see. And we, th we believe that we'll do a better job of that if you earn your voice as opposed to buying it. Okay, so uh, last week the president is uh, tweeting about someone who's actually testifying, kind of uh, making fun of her. Now, it, I, li I don't like to look at a train wreck, uh, but I know people are drawn to train wrecks, okay? I know people are drawn to access. I know people are drawn to big events, uh, uh, bloopers in a baseball game. Uh, what do you do about an actual president of the United States who is doing something that you and I might not want to do? Maybe we think it's unbecoming, but we want to watch it. Well, we have a rule around um, political figures which says that uh, they may tweet something that somebody else would tweet that is against our policies, and we might leave the tweet up, but we might limit its amplification, and we might cover it with what's called an interstitial. So you might have to click through to see it. And we'd tell you why it violated our rules, and we'd tell you that we left it up because we believe it's in the, the public interest to know right. what our elected officials or people who are running for office are saying, even if it might be something that could be perceived to be objectionable by one person or another, we think it's important that it's there for people to see. Okay, so Ned, you know that I recently went out after waiting and said the stock's got to be bought because it's just the franchise is ridiculously undervalued. The franchise, I'm not talking about the quarter to quarter, because you have been very, you've been very honest. You've said you, you have to make these changes. At what point have the changes come to the point where? It, the revenue is going to flow to the bottom line because a lot of things you're discussing, they cost a lot of money. They don't make any money. Well, we think we've got lots of opportunity in front of us. When we look at the 17% DAU growth, it's critical to start there. Remember, 18% growth internationally, 13% growth in the U.S., so it's broad-based. But why didn't people figure, uh, focus on that? Why did they focus on other metrics that, that you and I felt were not as important? Well, I think that's part of the accountability of being a public company is sometimes people focus on things um, that you wish had gone better. And these issues that we faced on our revenue products this quarter are things that are critical for us. But to, did the consumer package good companies? Did anyone say, listen, I'll let me come back when you figure it out? Uh, sometimes companies say, we're going to wait to run more ads until we understand better how the measurement's going to work. And other times people say advertising on Twitter is on sale because somebody else made a decision right. to walk away. But and so it's really a combination of different responses that we got from advertisers. You, Most okay. importantly, though, what we're hearing from them is they know we are the place to launch a new product and service. Still is. New movie, Bob Iger. Absolutely. If you're Warner Brothers and you put the Joker trailer up on all the services all at the same time, it was seen twice as many times on Twitter the first hour than anywhere else. If you're launching a over-the-top television pro, uh, uh, app. Right. We are the place where opinion gets formed about it, and you want to be there to talk about it and to help people learn about your service. Uh, same thing with connecting with what's happening, right. whether it's a sporting event yep. or a political event or something else. We are the place where people go when they want to connect with the things that their customers care about and are talking about on Twitter. Couldn't agree more. That's Ned Seelis, the CFO of Twitter, who does go back and forth with me. He knows that I'm an active user and has made good changes that I know I've requested to make it a more polite and better place. Thank you so much, Ned. Thank good you, to Jim. see you. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.